Yo, did I ever tell you guys this story about probably 10 years ago? Well, longer than that, more like 12 years ago. There's this guy that I know, he always wears suits and um, sport coats and trousers and things like that. So I always like looked at him like, wow, this guy really knows how to dress. But as you already know, when it comes to suits, it's just one piece. There's really no creativity involved. You don't have to worry about the top and the bottom not matching. It's a suit, you know what I'm saying? But I've always been intrigued by sport coats and trousers. Like, how do you actually know what color trousers to wear with your sport coats? I asked this guy one day, I'm like, how do you figure what color trousers to wear with your sport coats? And he was like, I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was something along the line like, it's really not that hard, man. You can just wear anything. And I remember saying to myself, uh, I, I don't think that's right, you know? I didn't say that to him. Because once again, he knew more than I did. But I'm like, there has to be something to it. It can't just be you just wear anything. Now, fast forward, I haven't seen this guy in years, but thinking back now, I got everybody know how to dress. <laughs> but I didn't know how to dress, so I thought he knew how to dress, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not that hard as far as wearing sport coats and trousers, but there's definitely a technique to it. It's not you just wear anything. <laughs> So this is what we're gonna talk about in this video, man. Intro. You should come rolling my sh Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Riche from ChaseAndRider.com. And in this video, we're gonna talk about outfit number one for the fall and winter. Now, what do I mean by outfit number one? Well, I'm going to be making a series where I talk to you about different outfits that I think would work for the fall and winter. Now, you don't have to copy it exactly as I'm telling you. You know, there's going to be room for individuality where you can bring your own flavor to it, you know what I'm saying? But if push come to shove, go ahead, man, just copy it. <laughs> I'm for the people, man, that's what I do, you know what I mean? So this is the first one. Doesn't mean that it's my favorite. I mean, it might be, I haven't even rocked it yet. This is just the first video in that series, man. So like that guy told me 12 years ago, you can just wear anything. No, you can't just wear anything, man. The answer is you really wanna wear a lot of gray trousers, man. Gray trousers are like a blank canvas that can go with a lot of different jackets. They don't go with every single jacket, but they go with a lot of them. You really wanna start with navy blazers. So the, some people call it the security guard look. I've never seen a security guard that sharp, so I don't pay attention to that, you know? <laughs> But uh, I see where they're coming from, man. Security guards, a lot of them wear blue and gray, you know? But they're not going to be looking the way that you're going to look. That's where I would start. I would just get a bunch of different gray trousers. The thing with gray, there are so many different variations. Charcoal gray, medium gray, light gray. You can't really go wrong, man, with none of them. And then I would start introducing more variations as far as the sport coats. Like I would start with solid colors, like navy, brown, some dark green. I would start with something like those, and then eventually start introducing more colors, like checks, more patterns, and those type of things. So navy and gray, it's not really something that I have to show you. It's really not that complicated, but I wanted to make a video that's a little bit more advanced for the first video. I'm gonna show you a sport coat and I'm gonna show you two different trouser options that you can wear with said sport coat. Let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start with the sport coat. So as you can see, this is not your ordinary sport coat. This type of pattern is what's called a Prince of Wales pattern. It's also known as a Glen plaid. This is one of my favorite patterns, man. I wanna get a suit made in this pattern. Maybe not as bold as this one. Uh, when it comes to sport coats, you can definitely go bolder. Like if this was a full suit, it would look kinda costumey just because the patterns are so bold. But for a sport coat, it's perfect. The thing with sport coats compared to suits, they're supposed to be more casual, even though a lot of guys still wear them with a tie. For the most part, I don't really wear a tie when I'm wearing a sport coat. You definitely can but it's still considered more casual than if you were wearing a suit. First thing first, the elephant in the room, you're probably thinking this is black and white. This is actually cream and brown. At least that's what it says in the description. So even though I have it in front of me now, looking at it, it doesn't really look like brown and cream to me, but it's brown and cream, man. <laughs> so this is from Spear and McKay and retails for $448. The mill is called Marling and Evans. As you can see here on the label, Marling and Evans is a company out of England and they've been around since 1782. So this is not your one of the mill 
no pun intended, company. This is like a company that's been around for a long, long time. This is a really, really beautiful coat. And you're probably wondering, how would you pair a coat like that with the trousers? So this is exactly what we're going to talk about. So as I was saying, great trousers go with a lot of different sport coats. But with this one, we're not going to do a gray trouser. Since this is cream and brown, I think that we can do better than just a gray trouser. So once again, this video is a little bit more advanced, but this is why we're here, man. We're all learning together, so let's get to it, man. As you can see, this still has the sticker on it, uh, but I've already taken it to my tailor, so this is all done. So I'm going to be trying it on for you to show you exactly how I'm going to do it. Um, but as far as the coat itself, this is the Neapolitan cut. As you guys know, that's all I wear from Spear and McKay. The Neapolitan comes with the wider lapels. So this is at least four inches. One well, of four inches on the 40, I wear 46. So this is a bit wider than four inches, maybe four and a quarter. I haven't measured it, but something like that. Sport coats come with patch pockets and patch pockets are more casual than let's say if it had a flat. Of course, I don't recommend for you to wear a sport coat with a t-shirt. But if you were to do that, you definitely don't want to do it with this kind of sport coat because it's very itchy. So you definitely want to be wearing a long shirt sleeve with this sport coat. That goes without saying, but I'll throw it out there anyway. Now, what color trousers can I wear with this? So since it's cream and brown, a good combination for this would be cream trousers. And as far as the fabric for the cream trousers, it doesn't really matter. It just has to be some kind of wintry fabric. So like cream corduroy would be really, really good or cream flannel would be really, really good. So let me show you. So these right here are cream flannel trousers. These are from Natalino. I'm going to include the link in the description. Uh, the great thing about these flannels is that they come in different lengths. You can save some money by not having to have them altered. So this is a short where the end seam, I believe is 30, which is perfect for me. I still took this to my tailor. I like for the leg opening to be around eight inches. I believe when they came, they were around eight and three eighths. And these trousers from Natalino are $175. These two colors go really, really well together because the coat already has some cream in it. And when it comes to your trousers and your sport coat, you definitely don't want them to match. That's the last thing that you want. So you always want the colors to be different, especially when talking about solid colors. But for this one, even though there's some cream in here and the trousers are also cream, this goes really, really well together. But this is a great outfit. I think this would look really, really nice. And I think that anybody can really pull this off, man. But I think that we can do even a little bit better. So let's look at option number two. So the second option that I would wear with this sport coat would be brown corduroys. So with this sport coat, you don't really wanna wear regular wool trousers with it. You wanna wear some heavy fabric that's going to stand up to it. So at first we had the cream flannel and the second option is some brown corduroy. Now both of these are from Spear & McKay. Uh, the good news is there are still some sizes left with this sport coat and the trousers. So I think this is a really, really nice look. This would be a beautiful Thanksgiving look, for example, if you're going to Thanksgiving dinner at your family's house. This is a really, really nice look. If you're going on a first date, like going to a restaurant or something like that, when things open back up, obviously. And this is just different, man. So the reason why I'm going with this combination is because like I was saying, this is a brown and cream coat. So the first one that we went with was the cream trousers. And now we have a brown corduroy. I believe Spear and McKay call this corduroy. They don't call it brown. What do they call it? Let me check right now. Spear and McKay calls this color a tan corduroy. Once again, the sport coat is cream and brown. So I feel like these two go really, really well together. The great thing about this outfit, besides it looking really, really good, is the price. As I was saying, the jacket is $448. These trousers are $138. So. See, you can look good without breaking the bank, man. I think a lot of guys think that you have to spend a fortune to look good. I'm not saying that these are cheap, but definitely not expensive, you know what I'm saying? So these are definitely attainable. And this is the reason why I wanted to start my YouTube channel, man. I think a lot of guys, they get intimidated by some of the prices that they see when they go to their local mall, looking at all these fashion brands. 
things are really, really expensive. They're thinking that this is what they have to spend to look good. You really don't. I'm not saying $448 for a sport coat is cheap. Once again, it's not expensive. You know what I'm saying? And $138 for this quality trousers from Spie and McKay, that's a really, really great price, man. When we're talking about corduroys, this is something that's going to last you a very long time. This is something that's been around for years and years and years. You don't have to worry about it going out of style. So yeah, man, this is a great outfit for outfit number one. What do you guys think, man? The cream would be my second option, but these would be my first option. I think this is a really, really nice look. So what am I going to wear on my feet? Great question, man. This is a question I get a lot. People usually ask me what color shoes do I wear with brown suits or what color shoes they should wear with brown trousers. So let's talk about it, man. Uh, so you're looking at a new box here from Yosal. You guys are familiar with this box. I've unboxed one pair of shoes from Yosal so far. But back in June, I made a video about a collection group order that Yosa was doing at the time for their pie crust apron. And I told you back then that I was going to get the Thompson, which is the split to derby, but I wasn't showing the leather choice yet. So this is what we have here, and this couldn't have worked out any better. Let's take a look. So as you guys know, Yosa comes in a draw style box. One thing that they did send me as a gift for this collection group order is a little Abbey Horn shoe horn, so that's really cool of them. And the shoes come in two brown shoe bags. The material is very velvety. And these are the shoes, man. So these are them right here, man. These are my Thompson from Yosal in the black grain, and this is the YRB last, which fits me like a glove, by the way. You guys know I've had trouble with some of the rack shoes fitting me well. This is probably my best fitting shoes that's ready to wear. Now, a couple things that are different with these shoes compared to my other split toe derbies. Uh, the first thing is this one has a spade sole as you can see here. So from the top down view, you can see how this sole is different. How it goes like a spade here and then it goes in. So one thing about a spade sole to me, it does make the shoes a little bit dressier. So these shoes are black shoes, which black shoes are typically dressier than brown shoes. Um, so those shoes are already a little bit dressier, even though A, it's a derby, so it's not an Oxford, so it's still, pretty casual, and B, it's also a grain leather, so it's not a smooth leather. So whenever you're dealing with grain leathers, you're talking about more casual shoes, you know what I mean? So it's still a very casual shoe, but the fact that it's black and the fact that it has a spade sole kind of lends it to also being a bit dressier than your typical split to derbies, you know what I'm saying? So that's good and bad. It's good that if I really wanna wear this with a suit, I think I can. Um, especially a more casual suit, not really like a very formal suit, but I think this will look good, really good with some flannel suits. The negative is split toe derbies are very versatile as far as wearing them with suits if you have to, wearing them with sport coats and trousers, and also wearing them with denim. With these, I don't think I can wear these with denim. A, I just think that black shoes with denim don't really look good. That's number one, and number two, also, because of the spade sole, I don't think that these shoes would look really good with denim. You know what I mean? But it's all good, man. I have plenty of split derby, so if I wanted to wear a split derby with a denim, I don't have to wear this one. I can wear another one, you know? As far as the sole, this is very similar to the one that I have in my Actent pair. The difference is this is a fiddle back waist. The other one was a beveled waist, so like a rounder waist. I've been making a video comparing these shoes to the Act 10. I'll have them side by side. But the purpose of this video was to show you what shoes that I would wear with the outfit that I just showed you. So when it comes to brown trousers or brown suits, I always wear them with black shoes. One thing I wouldn't do is wear brown shoes with brown trousers. It could work if they're totally different browns, but I just feel like to be on the safe side, I like the way that black look with brown. So with the outfit that I just showed you, these are the shoes that I would wear with them. I just think that the black split toes would look really, really nice with the tan corduroy. Now as far as the shirt, 
I think that the shirt should be light blue. And I think that it should be solid because once again, the jacket is really bold. So there's really no need for anything but a solid shirt because you already have enough patterns in the jacket. This is why I'm wearing a blue shirt. And as you can see, the brown pants and the cream and brown jacket go really, really well together. So let me know in the comments, how do you feel about outfit number one? Do you like it better with the cream trousers or do you like it better with the brown trousers? I really wanna know how you feel about it. With the shoes being black, that means you can pretty much wear them with anything color-wise. So the black shoes would also go when I'm wearing the cream trousers with that sport coat. I wouldn't change the shirt even though I'm wearing a different color trousers. I would still keep the shirt a solid light blue. But that was the first video in this series, my best outfit for the fall and winter. So hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe or everybody gonna think that you're a hater. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.